Welcome to the second video in this series. As I was getting ready to start working on generating new mesh data, I started thinking about what would be needed in order for us to get to that point. And one of the things that we're going to need to be able to do is to actually look at the wireframe of the uh, face structure of an object, of a mesh. And after looking around online, I didn't see an, an easy solution for how to do that as far as a checkbox in the editor. Now there is a checkbox in the editor where one can select wireframe. And when one clicks on it, you can see the floor and the cube is giving me exactly what I want, a wireframe. But when you actually run the game, you don't actually see that. I think that's an editor-only feature. And I did look, and somebody claimed that there was a shader available in, like, I think it's the Asset Store, that would be able to maybe do this. But I don't want to introduce the complexity of shaders right now. What we're doing is, is focused, and I, I don't want to be adding all these different pieces. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw the wireframe myself. And I think that actually will work well because in this series we're looking to actually use C Sharp to modify the mesh data. So this actually might be a pretty good uh, uh, sample or a, a, a prerequisite assignment to do here to make sure that something easy like that we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is not related in any way to this task, is I got tired of looking at this white cube. So I'm going to make this cube a different color, which has nothing at all to do with what we're looking to accomplish. I just got tired of looking at the white. So let's make this a do 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 about a green-ish thing. All right, that looks fine. And let's save this material. And we'll save it as cube spatial material. Again, has really nothing to do with what we're working on. I just got tired of looking at the white cube. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to be able to do is to query the mesh or using the mesh data tool. And I need a list of what makes up this object and when I looked online here um, the first the first idea I had was the mesh data tool you know it I was hoping that it would have the ability to just kind of iterate through the whole mesh and say look this is how you would quickly get through me however when I'm looking at the mesh data tool it does seem like it does some really cool things but it also seems like the cool things it does are based on you knowing something already like given this vertice what edges are connected to me or given this edge what faces are connected to me and that's super useful and we will be using that later on but to just kind of iterate through the the um, vertices and faces that make up an object this doesn't seem all that useful but the mesh itself has the ability, I believe, to do this. And I believe what we would use is this get faces method on the mesh itself. Because if one looks at the description of the get meshes, it says, returns all the vertices that make up the faces of the mesh. Each three vertices represent one triangle. So based on reading that, I think what that means is when one calls get faces on the cube mesh, we're going to get an array of vertices, and then every three vertices is a triangle. And we're going to go ahead and use the debugger and hang on a breakpoint, like I showed in the last video in the series, so that we can make sure that what this is returning is what I think it's returning before we invest all this time in... Uh, basically basing our whole idea here on the concept that this is doing what I think it's doing. 
So let's go back to the Godot editor and let's set it up for debugging. And then let's go to Writer. Since we're not going to use the Mesh Data tool, let's just get rid of it from the code that we had. And let's set up a breakpoint here just so we can inspect the cube mesh. So let's go back to Godot and hit the play button. It will build the project. It will hang on the breakpoint. Well, it'll hang for us to wait for us to attach the debugger, which we're going to do. Now it's going to hang on that breakpoint. Let's query the cube mesh and see if that get faces really is doing what I think it's doing. And it looks like yes. So I mean, what I think this is giving us is, so like, these three are a triangle, it's one face. These three are another triangle, it's another face. These three are another triangle, it's a face. And going all the way through to the bottom here, which is vertice 35, which, remembering, it starts at zero, so there are 36, so luckily it's a... Um, it's a number that we can actually count on there being three of up until the the end here. So let's go ahead and hit, let's go ahead and detach from the debugger. So then, now that we know that we can actually, in theory, we can get a list of those vertices. And actually, before we move on, let's actually just get. It was an array of vector threes. We'll call it vertices. And it is from the mesh, uh, cube mesh, and we will get the faces. So now we have the vertices, but what we want now is we want to, we somehow have to draw that on our scene. And I was looking to see in Godot, how can one draw something uh, on, you know, in the world? And the first thing is this surface tool. And the Surface tool does lots of really, at least it looks like it does lots of really cool things. And I do think that this could be used for this task, but I think it might be a bit overkill just for drawing lines between vertices. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the other way to draw stuff in a 3D world, which is called the immediate geometry. And the immediate geometry is actually a node in Godot. So like I could actually place an immediate geometry node underneath the cube and then use this to draw. But what I'm going to do here is I'm not actually going to place the immediate geometry node in the editor as a child of the cube. I'm actually going to do that in code. I, I think there's there's value in doing that in the code since this series is supposed to be about using C sharp with Godot. So I'm not going to place this myself. So how does this immediate geometry node work? Well, from what I can tell, what one does is one be, one invokes the begin method and tells it what type of things it's going to draw. It could be points, lines, triangles, and a few other things. And then at the end of it all, one does an end. And it looks like one does a set color to set the color of the lines, and we will do that. I think one would do that right after begin. So initially I was thinking, well, I'll go ahead and draw triangles, because the primitive type here we can pick as triangles. But I think if we draw triangles, it's going to actually fill in the triangle. So it's not just going to be the see-through wireframe that I'm looking for to kind of overlay on top of the cube. It's actually going to be a solid um, solid triangle or a set of solid triangles, and I don't want that. So I'm actually going to just draw lines. I'm going to draw lines um, that draw our triangles, basically. And I think this will be easy enough where it won't take very long for us to do this. So if we go back into our um, writer, so we want to create a new immediate geometry node. In this case, it would be an object, but it's going to be a node in uh, Godot. And then we want to 
call that begin on it. And we want to draw, so these are the different things you can draw. You can draw a line, a point, triangles, line loop, and you can see the other ones here. I'm going to draw lines. And I also want to set the color of what we're drawing. And I think I want to set it to a black. Alright. And then at the end of this whole process, we want to end it. And then we also want to add the immediate geometry node as a child of the cube mesh instance, like we did in the editor when, we, when I hit the plus button on it. So cube mesh instance dot add child immediate geometry. Okay, so so far we have the skeleton of what we want, but now we actually have to draw those lines. So we're going to want to iterate through that array of vertices up here. So we're going to use a for loop for that. And for right now I'm going to say the uh, kind of the the stride of the loop is going to be 1, so that's what the I++ plus plus is for. Since we're drawing the triangles, that's actually not going to be what we're going to use, but I just wanted to get the for loop code on the screen, and then we'll go back and change it. So when one thinks of how we're going to draw a triangle, uh, we're going to, we know the assumption that the vertices listed from the get faces are coming back, and every three of them is going to be a face. So basically, every three of them, we're going to draw a triangle. So when one thinks about how one draws a triangle, if one assumes the three points you're drawing are between A, B, and C, you're going to go from A to B, from B to C, and then to close the triangle, you're going to go from C back to A. Well, I think that's what we want to do here. We want to, each time through the loop, we want to draw a, 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 a full triangle. So the way we can do that is we would just, using the immediate ge geometry, we would add vertex, and we would do vertices I. So vertices I is A. So we want to go from A to B. We want to go from B to C. And then we want to go from C back to A. So let's just go over this again. So to draw a triangle, you want to go from A to B, B to C, C back to A. So on this list of three vertices, we go from A to B, then we go from B to C, and then here we go from C back to A. Well, because in the loop we're accessing I and we're adding to I, doing this I with only a stride of one, that's not going to work because we're going to get an array out of bounds when we get to the very toward the very end. So what we want to do is have this loop every time you're going through the loop that you're going three because again we're dealing with three points. So the first time through the loop we want to get the first three, the second time we want to get the next three and so forth. So let's just go through this code one more time because I do believe we're complete here. So we're going to grab the vertices from the, the cube mesh, which is going to be a big long array of vertices. Every three is a triangle. We're going to create an immediate geometry node. We're going to begin that and say it's in line drawing mode. We're going to set the color of the line to black. Then in the loop we're actually going to draw A to B, B to C, C back to A. We're going to say I'm done with the drawing immediate geometry. And then we want to set the immediate geometry as a child of the cube mesh. So let's go back to the editor. I don't remember if the debugger's on. It is. Let's shut it off. So in theory, when I hit the play button, we should see black lines around this cube now. So let's build in the solution. Opening up our window. And we do see that. However, we see it's kind of like dotted liney, and I don't think we want that. I I'm not sure why it's doing that. I'm I don't know if it's just the anti-aliasing is is causing some sort of like you know depth issue or whatever. 
but there's an easy fix for that because we're only using this for visual representation so we can see when as we're working here if we just scale up the immediate geometry just a little bit it'll be beyond the surface of the cube and then these lines will actually be solid so let's go back to writer and let's actually create a variable called uh, scale factor and let's just set it to one point um, one for right now and again a, a scale factor of one means it's exactly the same size a two would be twice as big a, a 0.5 would be half as big so what we want to do now is we want to immediate geometry dot and there should be a yep set scale and it takes a vector 3 so we're going to create a new vector 3 so this is going to be x y and z so we're just going to we're going to scale it in all three uh, axes the same so it's going to be scaled by 1.3 um, in every direction so let's go back to the editor and let's hit the play button and see what we have here it'll definitely be bigger than the cube I'm just worried that maybe it's yeah so you can see it's actually too big I mean this looks nice now it's not broken up with dotted lines but see how this is like I mean it's a lot bigger than the cube so 1.3 is probably too big so let's try going back here that's why I made this a variable instead of just putting it manually in here so we could change this easily um, how about 1.01 I don't know if that's gonna be too small but we only needed to butt it out just a little bit so this actually might work out to be what we want so it's building the solution hopefully we get some nice form-fitting black lines here in a minute yes looks like we're good here so you can see like here we have a triangle down here and up here we have a triangle up here and so we're actually seeing the faces and the edges that are composing this object so we're basically like overlaying a wireframe <clears throat> and I was actually surprised there wasn't like a checkbox somewhere that would allow you to do that like there is one like we talked about there is one in the editor itself but not actually in the uh, the game when the game is running so I'm not exactly sure how um, efficient this is as far as you know if this is the most efficient way to do this but for the purposes of this video series we're dealing with fairly small objects so for this purpose I'm not gonna worry about it and I also think that um, as we start manipulating the mesh and we're adding edges and vertices and stuff we really need to see the structure of the object and this was the quick and dirty way that I think I think this will work for us so in the next video I think the next thing we're still not going to be modifying meshes yet although we did create a mesh here of, of a sort the wireframe mesh but what we're gonna need to do now is I want the ability to rotate the um, camera around the world here around the cube in the plane I basically rotate the camera around the cube because I want to be able to look at this object from different places so that as we start changing stuff it's uh, we're gonna be able to ins you know see what we're actually doing so I think this is a good next step so I think I'm gonna stop the video here and I will catch you all next time take care